All right, hey everybody, and welcome to our free trade deadline edition of Personal Foul. We're going to talk about a few things today, including the Lakers' uh, kind of disappointing road trip <laughs> um, in Washington and Detroit. Right. Um, we're also going to be talking about Kobe the Bino and whether or not that was a significant moment or just another game in March. And uh, we're also going to mention the uh, rumors that are happening here in Lakerland, between Chicago and Boston. And then today we're also going to be introducing a new segment that we, well not a new segment, but giving a new name. It's, um, it's going to be called Frito, so uh, it should be interesting. Alright, so let's begin. <laughs> and let's talk about kind of the uh, very disappointing <laughs> road games that the Lakers have had right. uh, this past week. A loss against Washington, a loss against Detroit. Um, what can we talk? What can we say about this, Isaac? What? Well, it's it's fun though. It's the Lakers. One thing are not boring. I mean, uh, coming off the win against Miami, everybody thought that they figured out what kind of team they were. Kobe said they were a post up team, and they the, they finally clicked. They knew what they were gonna do. So went to Detroit, and it looked pretty good. Like in the first half, they looked like they were dominating the game. They looked like they're gonna be able to run away with it. But uh, they did not. <laughs> they had to let the Pistons come back and. You know, take the lead. But, you know, Kobe did was clutch in the fourth, sending it to overtime with the jumper. And when he hit that, I thought, all right, you know what? They're going to take, take it in overtime. But they did not. And Kobe didn't come through in the in the clutch. And that was weird. The last shot he took in overtime, he just kind of, like, flinged it up there with, like, six seconds. So I don't know if we lost track of time, but we actually thought he was going to get fouled. So it was it was an ugly, ugly loss uh, to Detroit. Uh, what What can we add to this Detroit Pistons game? Bynum actually had a pretty decent game. You know, he's been pulling together a good string of games where he's uh, averaging double-digit points, double-digit rebounds. That's something positive to look at. Right. But uh, there's nothing <laughs> much That's more it? positive that you can add to the game in Detroit. What about the bench? Uh, the bench didn't do very well. <laughs> uh, that's kind of become uh, a custom for, yeah, for, for the, the Lakers. Lakers. Right. But... Uh, yeah, the fourth quarter in particular, we saw a lot of uh, the Lakers moving away from the post game, which is something, you know, they should really reconsider because Bynum and Gasol had really been dominating down low, especially against Greg Monroe, um, who was, you know, a pretty decent center himself, and they moved away from that, and I don't understand why. Yeah, me either. I mean, after, yeah, especially because after that, after the game against Miami, like, the, like I said, they said... They were a post-up team. So to go away from the one strength you actually have as a team doesn't make sense at, at all. And then if he thought the Detroit loss was ugly. Oh, oh man. man. The Washington game was, was a head scratch. That, I, that, that has, I have no words to describe how bad that loss was against them. I mean, Kobe jacking up 31 shots. Terrible. And then Biden only getting eight shot attempts but had 19 points. So... I don't know. I mean, they make Nick Young look good. He actually had assists in the game. Nick Young, people, Nick Young. look like a legit guard. And that's all credit to the Lakers. Yes. Uh, you know, guys like Trevor Booker stepping up <laughs> for the Wizards. And, I, you know, it was really tough to watch. I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand how this team can look good against, you know, elite teams like Miami. And then lay an egg against Washington and Detroit on consecutive nights right. in the same road trip. I don't understand that. Yeah, and it was interesting, though, because I think Kobe shot 31 times that game. And the rest of the starting five shot 31 times. That's not a good balance. And also, Kobe shot, missed 21 shot, shots that day, right? Yeah, he, he missed 21 shots. That's the most anybody in the NBA has missed this season is 21. And actually, Kobe tied his own record because he's done it twice. <laughs> so he's That's he's sad. missed 21, uh, 21 um, shots twice in the regular season. So, you know, if he could just learn to give the ball inside a little bit more, cut down the shots, it will help the team out a lot better. But it, they're, they're an enigma on the road. I mean, no way to put it. You know, and it's crazy. Kobe's brand of hero mode, don't get me wrong, we've been, through Kobe, we've been here throughout Kobe's career for a couple of years now. You know, it's fun to watch when it's working, but when it's not working, it's the most, you, you, it's like watching a train wreck. You, yeah. you know, players are disconnected, 
you know, the Lakers had a team meeting after the Washington game, I guess, to discuss their their issues. Yeah. I'm sure chemistry was one of them because Kobe <laughs> was not passing the ball. You know, he's not giving them the ball. The players are disconnected. They're out of they're out of it offensively, and as a result, they lost two very beatable games. Yeah, and like I said in the, bit, in the last podcast we had, I said they got to go five and zero, oh. and they did not. I, 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 I said they had to beat Detroit and Washington. I gave those as given wins for the Lakers, so they're making me look bad by not beating teams they should win. They should beat. That's, I don't know. And it's, they nearly went zero and three. They <laughs> went against Minnesota without Kevin Love. Right. You know, and uh, almost laid an egg there. And, yeah, especially you know. in the first quarter. I mean, they they looked they looked flat in that first quarter of that game. They looked like no energy. Derek Williams and uh, Beasley and. Pepovich was just like getting offensive rebounds like crazy against the Lakers. The Lakers, exactly. Offensive rebounding was terrible. This without Kevin Love, one of the top rebounders in the game right now. Yeah, their best player. Their best player, and you know they can't rebound the ball. Yeah, and they got lucky too. But so on the sign up for Minnesota, we feel we feel bad that um, Rick Rubio is done for the, for the season. Yeah, I like Ricky Rubio. Rubio! Rubio! That was our rookie of the year, but, yes. you know, unfortunately he got hurt. Best hair in the NBA. <laughs> um, so, you know, what can we say about these losses looking forward? You know, this, the Lakers, the argument for the Lakers making it a deep playoff run or being an elite team definitely takes a hit after this road trip, doesn't it, Isaac? I, I don't know. I, I, I try to think so, but I don't want to get caught up in the moment. I know they lost two games. And they're like seven and fourteen or something like that on the road, but this this is still a team that's pretty much won two championships the last four years or something. So they know how to win on the road, and in the come playoff time, they're not going to be playing these type of teams. They're not going to be running the gun, and the game slows down. They are they play have more half court offense, and that's to the Lakers um, benefit. Gotcha. Yeah, that they have two seven footers, they have Kobe, so they are a half court team. So the game slows down, favors the Lakers in the playoffs. So that's something I take away that. It's just March. It's a, it's a shortened season. He's got to make it to the dance. He's got to make it to the playoffs, and hopefully they can fix this and actually win some games on the road, which they will have to in order to make it to the finals. Well, the Lakers did you know, get a sense of redemption at the end of the week this past Sunday against the Boston Celtics. Came yeah. up with a tough win. Uh, really amazing play from Bynum once again. Um, does this kind of take the edge off of the Lakers' losses early uh, in the week, guys? No, it doesn't. I mean, the Lakers are one of the best home teams in the, in the NBA. They're, like, now 18-2. and two. They don't lose at home. And the two games they have lost at home have been by, like, less than, I believe, five points or something. They lost to Indiana at the buzzer and lost to Chicago at the buzzer. So it's not like they're getting beat at home. They just have tough losses. So they're a good team. They're, they were supposed to be boss, and they did. You know, like I said, Bynum's playing exceptionally well right now. He's averaging about 16 and 14 a game. He's legitimate now, like, the second best center in the league. Maybe even in some people's minds, the best center in the league. So it's it's great to see Bynum emerge now. And yeah, he's healthy. In some, in some people's minds, the best center in the league. Yeah, in some people's no, minds. So. Kate Bayless, I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> and Chris Webber and Shaq. You can take it back all you want, but I heard you guys. Okay. Well, here's the thing that scares me about the Lakers. They have a very exceptionally well, good record at home. Is that home record sustainable? You know, eventually they're going to have to lose some games. And I'm still not convinced that the Lakers can win on the road. We're going to get a chance to see them. But this team won. This is basically pretty much almost the exact same team. Well, the core group is the, is the exact same team we had when we won championships the years before. And we've always been a good home, home team since we got Kasav. We've always been able to take it up home court. So... <laughs> That's one thing I'm relying on is that this is a veteran team. Is that I make it to the dance, make it to the playoffs. This is a and veteran the, team that can't win on the road. Yeah, though. but veteran teams it's, need it's, to win on the road. It's the Ides of March. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They'll, they'll figure it out in the playoffs. That's the only hope we have. That they'll they'll turn it on. Uh, but something interesting happened in that Boston game, though. Um, they were up one with like 20 seconds left. Kobe got the ball, and Mike Brown calls a timeout. Much to the chagrin of a, a Kobe Bryant who ha- just had a smile on his face telling Mike Brown, I have the ball. You don't need to call a timeout. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I got this. But um, <laughs> they were up one. And after the timeout, uh, reportedly it was Kobe who drew up a play. And um, he, he, he called the number for, for Bynum. And he was able, and they were able to give the ball to Bynum in the last seconds. And Bynum went to work, hit a nice little hook shot over, over, over Kevin Garnett and he gave the Lakers a three-point play. So I ask you, Manuel, is that one particular play significant, or 
just another game in March that doesn't really matter. No, this is just a matter of Kobe <laughs> throwing buying him a bone. But it's a big bone, though. Uh, I don't know about that. Let's run back to that play, right? The Lakers were already up. Right. They were up one point, and Kobe put him up with his jump shot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, he, he threw, you know, it was a low-risk situation. The clock was winding down. Gabe my the ball, he took the shot. I mean, for Kobe, this is a big deal because, well... He doesn't trust you know, nobody. He doesn't trust anybody, and he's going to take the shot. And it sort of is an extension of the olive branch to Andrew Bynum, who hasn't necessarily gotten looked at in <laughs> later games. Yeah. Um, but is this something that I see happening in the future... At a consist- on a consistent basis, I don't think so. Well, I, like I said, I, I don't think if they were down one. I don't think Bynum gets the ball. I think Kobe shoots it. But I think it's a, it's a big thing for Bynum that he's he's never really been healthy most of most of his career, and now he's having this All Star um, season he's having, and Kobe calls his number. So let's say he misses the shot or whatever, they only up by one, and Boston with a jump shot, you know, wins the game. With with him making that shot, it, it it at least guarantees him in overtime. They don't lose the game if Boston to three. So I think it was a pretty significant moment for the Lakers of something that that will that will help them out in the playoffs where where every possession counts more in the postseason. So I think it's a big moment for Kobe to finally trust somebody besides Fisher or somebody named Robert Ory in the clutch that he went to Bynum and Bynum delivered. So it's it's a good thing to see Kobe go throw the ball inside. Now if he could do that consistently throughout the other three quarters, you know, it'd be great to see that. Well, do you think that this is something that should happen more often? Do you would you want Bynum taking last minute shots at the end of the game? Well, I don't know want him taking it with every <laughs> shot though, but I think it goes a lot for confidence that now I think p- teams will not have to I guess second guess whether or not they want to double maybe they won't second guess, but they know they're gonna have to pay a price if they do double Kobe and they have a big seven footer who can not only make the shot but it can actually hit free throws at times. So he's a seven I think a seventy four percent free throw shooter, so he can hit free throws in late in the games. So that's that's pretty big to know that you have Kobe, you have Fisher, who, who who's proven to hit big shots, and now you're doing Bynum, who now we can see has that clutch gene in him.